Okay, so the first thing we need to do is figure out how to calculate oxidation numbers. So, in this first reaction, we're going to think about <clears throat> the change of ethylene and hydrogen, which happens to make ethane as the product, as the product of the reaction. In these reactions, we're going to focus on what happens at carbon. You could calculate oxidation numbers for any element, but in organic chemistry, you typically care about what happens to the carbons during the reaction. So that's what you focus in on. If I want to calculate the oxidation number for, for ethylene here, what I want to do is I want to consider every bond as being potentially an ionic bond. Even though it isn't an ionic bond, I'm just doing this for bookkeeping, I want to look at a bond and say, if this bond could be a polar bond and I could ionize it. Where would the electrons go? So all I'm asking is which atom in a molecule is more electronegative, which atom in a molecule is more electropositive. So if we go back and we think about uh, an earlier lecture, we had this chart of electronegativities here. We have carbon here with an electronegativity of 2.5 polling electronegativity of 2.5. Nearly everything to the right of it on the periodic table over to the halogens has a value of 2.5 or greater. So iodine happens to be 2.5. Phosphorus happens to be a little bit less than 2.5, being 2.1 here. So there's this diagonal shape over here that contains more electronegative elements. For practical purposes, we would consider nitrogen and phosphorus to both be more electronegative than carbon. Okay? Even though Pauling electronegativity says phosphorus isn't. And we would also consider iodine to be more electronegative than carbon. Okay? That all the halogens are electronegative elements. Okay, so if we look at this molecule of ethylene, hydrogen is a more electropositive element than carbon based on Pauling electronegativity. So we're going to take the electrons um, from this carbon-hydrogen bond and we're going to give them all to the carbon. Okay. It's two electrons in that bond and we're going to give both the electrons to the carbon. And we're actually going to do that for all of the CH bonds. So I'm using curved arrows here. I'm moving around pairs of electrons. Um, so I'm just trying to show that. This is not a reaction mechanism. I'm just doing it for bookkeeping purposes. The result of me moving those, <clears throat> those electrons is that I effectively set up a, a charge at each atom. And the way this works is that for every bond I break, I get a positive charge and a negative charge. A positive charge on the electropositive atom and a negative charge on the electronegative atom. Okay. So hydrogen's more electropositive, I make it positive. And for every hydrogen carbon bond I break, I put a negative on the carbon. Okay, the carbon carbon double bond in the middle of the molecule, that bond is perfectly covalent. There's no way I can say one carbon deserves to get all the electrons from the other carbon. And so the way I deal with that is. I say that one electron goes one way, the other electron goes the other way, so there is no charge. I'm breaking that covalent bond equally. And that, in terms of charges, will count as zero. When I'm all done, all I do now is I look at my carbons, 
and I'll circle them here. I look at my carbons and I look at what charges I have on them and you'll see that I have two negative charges and a pair of zeros on each carbon. And all I have to do is add them up. Okay, so now if I continue over here and I think about eth uh, I think about ethane here, the carbon that I have on the one side, there's going to be one of the CH bonds broken, another CH bond broken, another CH bond broken, and then a zero. So I add those up, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, plus 0, minus 3. Electrons are negatively charged, so if that oxidation number becomes more negative, that's a gain in electrons, and a So in this reaction, I have both of my carbons being reduced so this overall reaction is a reduction reaction. Does that make sense how I did that? Just go through and you break every bond in the molecule in the end, but you focus in on the carbons, usually. You could talk about whether or not the oxidation state changes for hydrogen during the reaction. It doesn't. It's always plus one for every hydrogen in the ethylene or in the ethane. The hydrogen in H2 goes from 0 to plus 1 as it reacts, so it, it becomes oxidized. 